I am sure that everyone watching this video at one point or another has heard the phrase fusion reactors are just around the corner. Well, there's a joke about fusion energy that is 30 years away and always will be. But why is that? We seem that fusion is possible, but why is overcoming the final hurdle of getting them to produce more energy than they require to operate so difficult to surmount? Today we're going to try and understand just how complex and difficult the logistics behind fusion really is. Before we start, I want to put out a quick disclaimer. I am not a fusion scientist or a trained physicist. As much as I love science, I am not an expert. Everything I'm going to say is just my understanding of the area and should be taken with a grain of salt. There is a fantastic video by Improbable Matter on the subject. I will link it in the description. He goes into far more detail than I ever could as he is an actual former fusion scientist. With that out of the way, let's begin. First of all, here's a simplified explanation of nuclear fusion. Imagine fusion of the process of combining tiny particles inside of atoms to release a tremendous amount of energy, like a powerful energy source. This happens because there are two forces at play, one that tries to hold the atoms together, and another that tries to push them apart from one another. These atoms are a bit like magnets. They naturally want to hold themselves together, but they also repel each other because they have the same kind of electrical charge like how two magnets with the same poles push each other away. When we manage to overcome the forces that repel the atoms to bring them very close together, the force that wants to hold atoms together wins and they combine, releasing energy. This fusion process is much more powerful than the energy that is released from stripping electrons from around an atom, which is what happens in regular chemical reactions. That's why fusion has the potential to provide us with a lot more energy than traditional methods like burning fossil fuels an example of how much energy can be released from fusion is hydrogen bombs. Hydrogen bombs are designed to release all the energy inside their fusion fuel as fast as possible, leading to, well, this. Scientists have been working on making fusion happen in different ways. One approach involves heating up hydrogen gas to incredibly high temperatures, much hotter than the center of the sun. They use strong magnets to keep the super hot hydrogen contained, creating a scorching soup of charged particles called plasma. The most promising type of fusion reaction uses a form of hydrogen called deuterium and another one called tritium. Scientists lock atoms, one of the elements in place, and then accelerate others to incredible speeds into the locked in place atom, causing them to combine. When these two types of hydrogen come together, they produce helium and release a massive amount of energy. However, there are some challenges to overcome, such as safely handling radioactive materials and dealing with the intense heat generated during the process. Now here's where we are currently. Scientists have made progress in achieving fusion reactions, but we haven't quite reached a point where we get more energy out of fusion than we put into it. Scientists measure this using something called the fusion gain, represented as Q. A Q value of 1 means we've reached break-even, where the energy output equals the energy input. But due to some energy losses, we need to aim for a Q value well above 1, around 10 or more, to make fusion economically viable. Currently, with the fusion reactions that have been achieved in devices like tokamaks, which are machines that use strong magnets in a donut shape to control the super hot plasma and hold it in place, or at a Q value of about 0.6 with the deuterium tritium reaction. This means we're getting some energy out, but not enough to make fusion practical for widespread energy production. So the goal for fusion research is to improve our methods and technologies to reach a Q value of at least 10 or higher. When we achieve this, it means we're producing way more energy than we're putting in making fusion an economical and sustainable source of clean energy for the future. Researchers worldwide are working tirelessly to make this vision a reality. Okay, but how do we achieve this? Well, that's where the difficulty comes in. As you can imagine, containing plasma that is literally 10 times hotter than the center of the sun isn't exactly easy. Surprisingly enough, mater most materials don't last long in that environment, which means the walls of reactors degrade very quickly and that prolonged fusion reactions are very hard to achieve without destroying the reactor itself. 
Think of the plasma inside the reactor like a red-hot balloon in a room, and the scientists are trying to stop, the, stop it from touching the walls, roof, or floor of the room using magnetism. Another aspect of making nuclear fuel economical is the tritium needed for the reaction to take place. Tritium is a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. It has a very short half-life of only 12.3 years, which means storing it long-term is basically pointless, and recovering it from natural sources is very costly and again is too rare. So scientists are exploring using something called a lithium blanket. Basically, there's a sheet of lithium that will put around the inside of the reactor, because when fusion takes place, it releases energy in the form of neutron radiation. When these neutrons collide with lithium, they split and form tritium. This can then be collected and fed back into the reactor in a sort of self-sustained loop, hopefully. This is yet to be put into practice, and is hypothetical at this point. All in all, fusion is a mind-bendingly cool and complex area of science that I personally find intensely fascinating. Just think about this for a second. We as a species are formed out of the elements created in the depths of stars billions of years ago. Those elements floated through space until they stuck together into a big blue ball called Earth, and then somehow spontaneously life formed, which then led to temporary beings called humans that are able to observe the universe around them and harness the power of the center of the fucking sun, and that eventually we will die, return back into the same elements we were created from, and once again float through the universe once more. I find that beautiful. Controlling plasma hotter than the center of the sun and handling tritium is formidable challenges, but as science and technology advance, we're inching closer to harnessing the power of the stars here on Earth. Thank you so much for watching, it means the world to me. If you enjoyed this video, I hope to see you in the next, but until then, I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.